Hey, YouTube fam, what's up? It's Patrick, so good to share another practice with y'all. In today's session, I wanted to give you an active morning stretching routine that I do all the time, something you can come back to every single day. I really hope you enjoy it. Let's get right into it. Uh, so go ahead and find your way into a low lunge position. So swing your right foot forward and step your left foot back. Sway forwards and backwards a few times here. Just kind of get your body moving a bit. And then once you feel settled there, you found a good lunge position. Stretch your right knee a little bit forward, drive through your back left toe especially. Plant your left hand flat on the floor. Lengthen through your spine and then lower your left knee down. And then push to lift it back up. So really work to extend your back left leg. We'll do about 10 of these. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Let's hold up on the last one here. Really try to work through your toes. And I hope this routine helps you feel really good. That's the whole goal of this. Of course, you'll improve your range of motion because you're moving, but feeling good is just as big of a part of the process. Lower your left knee down, push your hips back in space, straighten through your right leg in any capacity. Find a line of tension, try to move around just a bit. and then swing yourself back forward. Tuck through your back left toes. You can keep your left hand down again or interlace your hands on the top of your right leg. Push through your left big toe and elevate. We'll only do five of these. You wanna think about your hips staying low the whole time. Even if they lift, fight to keep them low. This is two, lower. <laughs> this is three, lower, four, lower, five. Hold on the fifth one. Release. Lower your left knee to the floor. Push your hips back in space. And here you can walk your hands to the outside of your right leg if you choose, trying to move into some different territory. Folding over your right knee, pulling your hips back in space. And then return to center and switch your side. Right foot steps back, left foot steps forward. As we did on the first side, go ahead and mosey around a little bit. So sway your hips around. Find length in your spine. Give yourself the ability to just kind of cruise around here. But don't be dormant in your feet. Like you really want to make sure you're pushing off your back right toes, pulling your left heel underneath you a bit to activate your hamstring. That's going to help us. And then go ahead and lower your right knee to the floor. Plant your right hand down flat. I like to have my left hand on top of my left leg here as a reminder to push and pull here and kind of cinch everything to the middle. All right, so from here, we'll lift and lower the back knee 10 times. Lift and lower. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Heavy hips the whole time. Seven, eight, nine. And 10, hold up on the 10th one, reach through your skull, get a little bit longer. Deep breaths here. Feel everything pulling to the middle. And then release. Lower your right knee to the floor, move towards relative straight in your left leg. Because we're focusing so much on moving through the hips here, let the hamstring work be a byproduct of your hip work. So while you're helping move your hips through space, that's going to naturally help you get deeper into your hamstring range of motion, hamstring flexibility, all those things. Pull yourself back forward, dragging your left heel underneath you. Tuck your back right toes. Again, last round here of five, you can keep your right hand planted or interlace hands on top of your left leg, really trying to get tall here. Remember the hips stay low and then push through your right big toe, drive your right heel back and lower. That's one, two, three. Sometimes you gotta, you know, lose your balance along the way. It's just part of the process. Four, when you're trying to do everything at one time. This will be our last rep here. Hold at the top, find your stability. Really try to push your hips forward, hold, and release. 
Let your right knee find the floor. Push your hips back in space. And again, just melt over your left hamstring in some capacity if you want to add the twist here. Right hand to the outside of left foot. I recommend it. Feels nice. Gives you space. Gives you freedom. Gives you reach. Return to center. Pull your left foot underneath you. Step your right foot up to meet your left. Shake your hips out a little bit. And then we're going to start by sitting into our squat position and then move from squat into a forward fold. If you need to adjust yourself so your heels are lifted in your squat, I strongly recommend it. So that would be for anybody who can't come down to here. But we did just move through your hips, so this may be more available than normal. Give it a try. And then from here, pull your knees apart, but have your toes facing relatively forward. And then what we're going to do is drive through your heels, straighten your legs, fold over your shin. Then sit your hips back down to your heels, lift your skull. Straighten your legs, fold over your shins. Sit your hips down, lift your skull. Straighten your legs, fold over your shins. Sit your hips back down, lift your skull. So you know the progression of the movement. Now we're going to go for roughly 10. You can always go a little faster or slower than me. I want you to really feel the imprint of your feet on the floor, on the mat, on the rug, wherever you're practicing. It's going to feel the groove here. You can use your hands to support you. The key thing is to finish both positions. So fully straight legs at the top and lifting chest and skull at the bottom. Oftentimes, it gets easy when you're doing repetitious movements to forget the ending points. And that's just limiting you, essentially, right? Because what you end up doing, just as I did on that rep right there, is you're not moving into your full expression of the shape, and that's not allowing you to create new space because your finishing space in each position will improve every single rep, maybe just by 1% to 2%, but if you really focus and organize yourself in space, you'll be shocked at not only the results you get, but how good your body will feel moving through space, which is our overall goal here. When you finish in your squat this round, sit nice and low, bring your elbows to the insides of your legs, push your big toes down and just kind of drive your triceps into the inner line of your knees. Feel a little groove here. Lift your chest a little bit more. And then slowly sit your hips down to the ground. Nice work, straighten your legs out. Fold to the middle, sway around. Use this as much of a, or as a space for recovery as much as anything else, so allowing yourself the opportunity to move right and left, lengthening through the top of the skull, sweeping from space to space. And then go ahead and rise up. All right, from here, plant your right foot down, roll onto your right hip, Take your left shin to the floor, your left foot, top of the left foot, plants firmly on the mat. If you need to use a blanket here, strongly recommend it. We'll give you good support. And then place your hands behind you, squeeze your shoulder blades together, full retraction. Take an inhale here, you're going to push through right foot, left shin, and both hands to drive your hips up off of your left heel. So you're pushing down to elevate, tailbone tucks underneath, and you lower. Push down to elevate, tailbone tucking underneath, and lower. And however high you get, completely up to you, to your range of motion, and to how often you practice these things. But hopefully, you're moving with relative ease and with grace, even through the tension. On this last one, we'll hold your top position. Breathe into your chest here. See if you can lengthen through your skull. Lean just a little bit further back. And then exhale, release. So from here, I'm going to pivot to you, but what you're going to do is just drop your right knee to the floor and open your left leg out to the side slightly so you're in a relative 90-90-esque position. From here, I want you to push into your right hand if you feel that you're leaning over to the outside of your right leg. But if you can stay vertical here, you don't need to use your hands at all. And then we're going to fold over the right shin. So dropping down long through your spine as much as possible. 
and then lifting up. So every time, no matter what happens, I'm thinking about my belly button going past my shin on the folds and then lengthening from my lower back as I rise. So always working towards the natural curves of the spine. As you can see here, I use my left hand as kind of a point of contact for my right big toe. And that just helps me keep my leg active and engaged. On this last one, hold your bottom position. So you can get a little bit longer here, pushing your hips back in space, stretching the top of the skull forward. Inhale, rise. Drive your left knee down into the floor. Sit as upright as possible. And then lift your left foot off the ground. Boom. Even if it's just an inch. And lower. Left foot lifts off the ground. And lower. Left foot lifts off the ground. Lower. Left foot lifts off the ground. Lower. Left foot lifts off the ground. This time we hold it for five, four, three, two. On one inner left ankle touches. Now we'll peel the left knee off the ground, keeping the right knee grounded. Try to get the whole bottom of your left foot to the floor. Pull your left knee out to the side and lower. Open, left knee lifts and lower. Open, left knee lifts, 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 hold your space here. Try to really drive through the outer edge of the left foot. See if you can maybe even bring your left hand to the outside of your left knee. Give yourself a little tangible target here to push into for the last five, four, three, two, on one, release and let that go. Open your legs up into your straddle position. Notice the difference in your legs and then just fold around here, that similar meltdown. And you notice in none of these shapes, I'm being static while I'm continuing to try to push my heels into the floor, maybe a 10% effort. I'm really just allowing myself the opportunity to groove down into space. Inhale, rise out of it. And then we'll move to our second side. So your left foot will be your forward foot. I'll spin around because I think that'll be an easier view. And your right shin is coming to the floor, top of the right foot plants down. Hands go behind your back, shoulders squeeze together. Feel a good push here. Take an inhale. And on your exhale, drive down to rise. Inhale at the top as you create your space. And lower. Drive down to rise, pushing through your left heel. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. And lower. Push down through your shin, chest lifts, hips rise. Lower. Push down through your right shin, chest lifts, rise. Lower. Push down through your shin, chest lifts, and you rise. Lower. This is the last one. We'll hold it. Push down through your left heel, right shin, chest lifts, rise. Breath into the chest. Really feel your tailbone tucking underneath you. Pull your belly button in. You'll get even more in the front of your right leg. And release. Lower down. Wonderful. Drop your left knee out to the left side. Open your right foot up slightly so the inner arch of the right foot is in the floor. The outer line of your left leg is in the floor. Inhale, elevate yourself here. We have our folds first. Right hand comes to the bottom of the left foot. Take an inhale. And then on your exhale, fold down. Melt over your left shin. Remember, longest possible spine, and rise. Fold down over your left shin, and rise. Fold down over your left shin, and rise. Fold down over your left shin, and rise. Last one here, fold down over your left shin. Push your left foot into your right hand. Try to linger here, try to get longer. And by getting longer, you want to think about your tailbone going backwards towards your right heel and the top of the skull reaching forwards. And the nice thing about, again, using your hands to support you here, for one, your left hand can push into the floor, help you get more length in the side waist if that's where you struggle. And your right hand pushing gently into 
your right big toe mound is really helpful for staying active in your left leg. Inhale, rise. Up. Hands can be anywhere here. We're working through our back right leg, staying as vertical as possible. Push down through the inner line of your right knee, and then lift your right foot off the ground. So it's like springing up, and again, this movement could be very little, or it could be massive, just depending on who you are. Lower down, lift up, lower down, lift up, lower down, lift up, lower down. This is our last one here, lift up. Try to pull your tailbone back. Remember, we're holding this in space. We're trying to create more range here, more engagement, more support, allowing our body to trust some of these new spaces and release. Let it go. All right, from here, we're going to open this right knee out to the right side, keeping your left knee pushing down to the floor. Set yourself up. Maybe you want to bring your right foot a little bit closer in here. I find that helps me get more activation. You want to be in a space where you can get create that activation, not in a space where you feel like you're just moving, but nothing is really happening. All right, from here, peel your right knee open, push down through the outer edge of your right foot, and you can always just tap your glute here, see if it's on. If it is, you're doing the right thing. Right knee lowers. Right knee lifts and lowers. Right knee lifts and lowers. Right knee lifts and lowers. This is the one we'll hold. Right knee lifts. Hold your top position. Bring your right hand to the outside of the right knee. Subtle, tangible target pressure here. Push right knee into the palm of right hand. Really try to stay active, stay present, stay connected here for five, four, three, two, on one, release. Wonderful job here. Go ahead and swing your legs out to an easy folding position, dropping down to the middle. It doesn't matter how wide your straddle is here, just as long as there's nothing in the way of you in the floor. In this moment, if you want to have a cushion to support you, you could, I know this has been an active stretching practice, but if towards the end you want to have a moment of passive, a moment of softness, a moment of kindness, I recommend it, right? Listen to yourself, listen to your own body. And also know that this is a short little practice that you can come back to at any time. This is a nice thing to do during the middle of the day, before you go to bed. I've been doing this um, recently in the evenings a lot. I know I said it's a morning practice, but I've kind of been doing a variation of it in the mornings and a variation of it in the evenings, very similar work. And it just helps me feel better when I wake up. It helps me feel better when I go to sleep. So I hope you've found a little bit of joy here. You can linger in this fold as long as you want. You can, you know, kind of mosey into deeper space as we've been doing so frequently in this little session. If you enjoyed the practice, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. New practice videos coming out every single week. And of course, thank you so much for being part of the community. I look forward to practicing with you again very soon. Peace.